Hello friends, this video on semiconductors part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 7 before going ahead with part 8. We will now talk about a PN junction formation. So what is a PN junction? So gradually if you see we started with the very basics. So now we will gradually get into complex things. However, this is not complex but now we till now we understood what is p type semiconductor what is n type semiconductor now what we will see is if we combine a p type semiconductor with an n type semiconductor what will happen p n junction will be formed that means there will be a junction which will be formed in between so let us look at what is a p n junction p n junction is like the building block of semiconductor devices so this P, you should understand the, this concept of PN junction very clearly because this will be the same concept on this concept itself you build everything else when we talk of diodes when we talk of transistors I mean those were the things which I showed you in the slide for introduction that why are we studying this lesson so if you understand this PN junction you'll be able to understand those things very easily so P type and N type semiconductor connected back to back so that gives rise to a p n junction now what happens in this case we know that in case of a p type semiconductor number of holes is very high whereas in case of an n type semiconductor number of electrons is very high right so that means if you look at it here in this region holes are too many whereas in this e region there are too many electrons that means there is a difference in concentration in the two regions if we think of number of holes holes are very high in concentration in p region than in n region now due to the difference in concentration in p region and n region what happens diffusion takes place you know diffusion right what is diffusion diffusion means movement of particles from one region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration so here diffusion takes place because p region has high concentration of holes and n region has low concentration of holes so what happens holes start moving from how will the holes diffuse holes will diffuse from which region to which region from region of higher concentration that means from region of higher concentration of holes so that is p so it will move from p to n whereas electrons will diffuse from region of higher concentration of electrons that is from n to p so this diffusion this electron diffusion and hole diffusion will start taking place right whenever you connect a p and n type semiconductor back to back electron diffusion and hole diffusion will start taking place now what will happen as these diffusion takes place now as a hole diffuse from p region to n region as soon as a hole diffuse from here to here it leaves behind a negative immobile charge similarly when an electron diffuse from n region to p region it leaves behind a negative immobile charge I'm sorry a positive immobile charge somewhat like this let us suppose this is p region and this is n region now electrons from here are moving towards p so when the electron moves what is left behind some positive charge is left behind similarly when a hole moves from p to n when hole moves what is left behind a negative charge right so that means as this diffusion takes place some negative charge are left behind in p region and some positive charge are left behind in n region and these charges are immobile because they are bounded to the neighboring atoms so they cannot move right and these charges give rise to a region for example as electron diffuses when electron diffuse it leaves behind positive immobile charge so these positive immobile charge gives rise to positive space charge 
region on n side that means let us suppose this was the separation between p and n type region now as the electrons moved from n region the positive charges were left behind in the n region so these positive charges in the n on the n side is known as the positive space charge region on n side similarly as the holes diffuse similarly as holes diffuse they leave behind negative immobile charge and these gives rise to negative space charge region on the p side now this positive space charge region and negative space charge region together is known as the depletion region so why is this known as the depletion region because inside this region this region consists of all immobile charges that means they cannot conduct current that is why it is called depletion region that means it is depleted of conduction so this depleted region is made up of the immobile positive and negative charges so that means diffusion why does diffusion happen diffusion happen when p type and n type uh, semiconductors are connected to each other as a result of diffusion what happens depletion region is formed right okay so what did we study on this slide we talked about depletion region that is the space charge region on either side of the junction diffusion of majority charge carriers give rise to depletion region okay another important thing to note here is diffusion always happens with majority charge carriers because as, as i mentioned you before diffusion will always take place from region of higher concentration to lower concentration so if i am saying that electron diffusion is taking place that means electron is moving from a region where electron concentration is higher that means n region so n region for n region electron is the majority carriers right so diffusion always takes place of majority charge carriers so diffusion of this majority charge carriers give rise to depletion region fine so are you understanding what will happen if you connect a p type and n type together first of all diffusion of majority charge carriers will start taking place so the majority charge carriers will start flowing across the junction as a result at the junction you will have some positive charges and negative charges which are together which will together form the depletion region now what will happen as a result of the depletion region if you look at it this depletion region also consists of positive charges on one side and negative charges on the other side so as a result an electric field will be established for this depletion region there will be an electric field established right and because of this electric field it will give rise to drift of minority charge carriers that means this will be the direction of electric field now what will happen the negative charges which are present on the p side those negative charges will start moving in a direction opposite to the direction of the electric field that means the electrons which are present in the p region these electrons will move in a direction opposite to this electric field so the electron drift will take place along this direction similarly the holes which are present here they are positive charges so they will move along the direction of electric field so the whole drift will take place in this direction so what do we see we see that diffusion gives rise to depletion region and depletion region gives rise to drift so drift of minority charge carriers fine is it clear to you because if you see the majority charge carriers are busy in diffusion so all the majority charge carriers are moving across the junction now as this diffusion keep taking place the width of these depletion region keep increasing because as more and more diffusion takes place more and more immobile charges will be created therefore the depletion region will increase in width now as the width of the depletion region increases the strength of the electric field will also increase 
Now, as the strength of the electric field increases, the drift of the minority charge carrier will also increase. Is that correct? Okay. So, that means, let me note it down, whatever I spoke. So, diffusion happens whenever we connect a p-type and n-type together because there is a difference in concentration of electrons and holes. So, diffusion gives rise to depletion region. So, the depletion region width as diffusion increases, depletion region width increases. As a result, the electric field strength also increases, right? And as a result, the drift current also increases. So if you see, when a p-n junction is formed, that means when you join a p-type and an n-type semiconductor, there are two categories of currents involved. One is diffusion current, one is drift current. Diffusion current is due to the majority charge carriers and drift current is due to the minority charge carriers. Right? So what do we see? Initially, diffusion current is large and drift current is small. That's because initially there was no depletion region. As soon as you join a P-type and N-type, you will not get a depletion region. As the diffusion keep taking place, the depletion region will gradually form. Right? So initially your drift current is very small because there is no depletion region. But the diffusion current is large because as soon as you join P-type and N-type, due to the difference in concentration, electron diffusion and hole diffusion will start. But later what happens, diffusion current, diffusion current, drift current keeps increasing and it reaches a stage when the drift current becomes equal to the diffusion current. And at this stage, we see that a p-n junction is under equilibrium. So a p-n junction is under equilibrium when the width of the depletion region is such that the electric field strength is just enough to overcome the diffusion current. Because here you can see that the direction of diffusion current and drift current are opposite to each other. So if the electric field strength increases in such a way that it reaches a point when this electron drift is exactly equal and opposite to the electron diffusion, then what will happen? There will be no net current because diffusion current and drift current being equal and opposite will cancel each other. Right? So you understood this concept of diffusion current and drift current? Okay, so now let us talk about the p-n junction under equilibrium. When a p-n junction is at equilibrium, what happens? Well, now at equilibrium, what will happen? The net current through the p-n junction will be equal to zero. That's because at equilibrium the electron current, the electron diffusion current will be equal to the electron drift current. Similarly, the whole diffusion current will be equal to the whole drift current. So therefore, the net current will be equal to zero. However, there will be a potential difference between P and N. However, a potential difference exists between n and p but why does a potential difference exists between n and p that's because the electrons moved from n to p right the major right now i'm talking about the diffusion of electrons the majority charge carriers so the majority charge carriers moved from n to p so what happened to n n became positive that means n region became positive right holes moved from p to n since so many holes moved from p to n what happened p side becomes negative so that means n region is positive so n is positive with respect to p so this results in a potential difference between n and p Right? So this potential difference restricts further flow of electron from N to P. Is that right? Why does, I mean, try to understand it in this way. As soon as you join a P-type and N-type, 
due to the difference in concentration, diffusion starts. That is majority charge carriers start flowing from N region and P region, right? As a result of this, depletion region is formed. Now, as this diffusion continues, the depletion region increases in width. At the same time, th that is one part. At the same time, as diffusion continues, the potential difference between N and P also increases. So at a certain point, the width of the depletion region is such and the potential difference between N and P is such that it does not allow further diffusion of majority charge carriers, right? So at that point, we say that the PN junction is at equilibrium, right? So this potential difference at equilibrium between P and N is known as barrier potential. So how do we define barrier? Why do we call it barrier potential? Because this potential difference between N and P restricts further flow of majority charge carriers. So it is the potential difference between N region and P region which restricts further flow of majority charge carriers across the junction. Barrier potential is also sometimes known as barrier height, right? So that means whenever we talk about this depletion region, we talk about two things. One is the width of the depletion region and the other one is the barrier height. So barrier height is nothing but the potential difference between N region and P region. So these two parameters actually decide when the diffusion will stop, right? So you understood the concept of a PN junction. See, please understand it very clearly because this is going to help you as you as we go ahead and start studying other things. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.